begin our journey in 2024. We begin our journey. The Lord had said to us that 2024 is the divine year. And divine had to do with anything that has to do with God. He told us during the crossover service that the word divine had been abused, misused, and misrepresented in the earth. That you find that word being used by many people on things that are very relevant, very sensual, very earthly, and very worldly. Some events and some places where such words are not supposed to be found are places where the word had been used. So we looked at all of that during the crossover service. He told us that the word divine has its root in God. When you use the word divine, you are saying that it is God. Do you remember? It is God. So, but he told us that this year, what we are going to have in the class of the divine is that it's going to be of a year of divine transformation. So that is why we first place the word divine ahead for you to know that it is the year of God. Then secondly, we now bring it down by saying it's our year of divine transformation because when you say divine you're saying god so when god comes in your 2024 what are you expecting him to bring and that's why he told us what i will bring for you in 2024 is transformation so it's a year of divine transformation but first it's a year of the divine It's the divine year. It's the year of God. All you are going to see this year is God and his attributes. It is going to be God all through. You see, when Mary was told that she was going to have a child, she asked the angel, how do you think this is going to be possible, seeing that I know not a man? Which means, humanly speaking, it was impossible. And the angel said to her, It says, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. Which means, God will come in. The impossible things of this year will be carried out by God. When you are going, all it needs from you is to be conscious To be conscious of this truth. To be conscious of this reality. That when you are going for an event, you're going for a contract, you're going for your business, you're going for exams, whatever. All you need to do is to be conscious that this year is all about God. It is God that will happen this year. It is not you It is not your family. That's why he said, it is not going to be by might. It's not going to be by power. It's going to be by the spirit. And that spirit is the word divine. Because the spirit of God is divine. Praise God. Lift up your right hand. Say, it's my year of the divine. divine. Say, I will see see transformation. transformation. Amen. Amen. So, In the month of January, this January, I'll begin to show you steps into. And that's why we're not going to be in a hurry. Show you steps of how to accomplish what God said in this year. 
You know, many of us have had terrible and bad experiences. For some of us, last year was not a memorable one, was not a good one. It was something you want to quickly forget in a hurry. Because there were many things that happened to you. You know, I always, I'm a believer in the school of thought that God is never partial. And his treatment over our lives are good. You see, when you find a believer who is going through a very tough time, or is going through tough situations, or some things are happening to the person, and the person keeps crying and asking God, but God, where are you? And it looks as if God is not showing up. There are a couple of things that God begins to show to the person. For instance, maybe in the course of your affliction, you now began to learn how to pray for two hours. You have never prayed for two hours before. But when affliction came, you started praying for two hours. You started seeking God and praying for three hours. You mandated yourself that every Friday you will fast till 6 p.m. Something you never did before, prior to the affliction. But now, you started carrying it out because of the affliction. Now, let's assume that it was your uncle or your auntie or your daughter or your friend that you were praying for. And you began to stretch forth yourself in fasting every Friday or Thursday and you pray for three to four hours every day. Eventually, eventually, God forbid, maybe the person died or you failed the exam or they didn't give you the visa or the contract finally did not come. You know, you cry and say, with all that I have done, the thing still did not work. But something you don't understand is that that thing you went through has left a mark on you. That even after that affliction has gone, maybe it didn't turn out the way you wanted, but it has left you with an option with a very good, very good degree of spirituality. After the whole thing, you now learned how to pray for four hours. You see that in the end, God won. Because some of you may not understand what I'm talking about. Life is still very beautiful for you today. You are eating bread and you are putting butter. Then you got married. Only for you to discover that your wife is finding it difficult to conceive. You people now started midnight prayer. You see, the midnight prayer that we have been announcing in church that you refuse to do, affliction has helped Pastor Bina. Because now, you are now doing midnight prayer. And you are doing it for the very, very wrong reason. You are praying so that you could see the face of God change the situation. But at least you are now praying two hours, midnight. And you think that the moment you started six months after your wife will conceive. No. God is at work. The thing lingers for two years until midnight has entered you. You have not heard of Pastor Jerry's testimony. You need to hear. Pastor Jerry is the senior pastor of Streams of Joy in Abia State. And he is the convener of the NSPPD prayers, right? He said, I didn't start out like this. The prayer you see that has generated a lot of heat, a lot of power, a lot of testimonies all over the world, and has brought him fame, popularity, and all of that, was actually a problem between him, his wife, and the marriage. There was an issue in the marriage. And in the fight to bring solution to it, he began to pray the more all night because 
There was no time for himself and the wife to have conversation. So he turned it into prayers. All night prayers. It was in that mood of praying for years. Not like six months. For years. That the wife finally succumbed. Things changed. And that thing birthed a ministry of prayers online. Then, people started connecting. Then, there was lockdown. So, he carried that ministry and that fire. Instead of sitting at home, let us now begin to pray. Then, they started praying. Then, the team blew to what you have today. But that was not how it started. I tell people, sometimes you go through certain affliction, but you do not know that in the midst of your affliction lies a ministry. You think that all God is interested in is just to give you a breakthrough or a break forth in your business area. No, sir. There is more to that thing. God has a blueprint. God has a plan. It is in dying the more, the more you stay death. Amen. Are you still with me? Wave at me, wave at me if you can, if you can hear me. Praise God. I can tell you of people who got into the healing ministry because they lost a loved one. One of the things I've learned about God is that He is not quick to bring you out of the trouble that would deliver a future into your hands. He's not quick, He will leave you. But He's not the author of that thing. But man naturally is stubborn. We don't like it cool and calm. No. No, 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 no. We don't like it cool and calm. We don't like things working naturally by itself. We love it when we have to be beaten. We love it when we have to be hammered. We love it when we have to suffer for things to work. That's how man is. Today you are in church. For some, it is because they are going through a hard situation. Some came for this one-on-one prophetic this thing because they know that ah let, let the man of god even speak to me i don't know what i'm going through there's no assurance that whatever we tell you today there will be solution tomorrow no sir no a man of god you find people on social media they say that ministry there's a lot of testimony the testimonies they show you are the ones that the people have received. There are others too that didn't receive that they prophesied to. Because if we have to announce the ones that didn't receive, nobody will go there. You didn't get what I said. There are those who will take it and work it out. They'll quickly put it to work, it will produce results. Yes. So maybe you are here and things are really hard. God will grant you peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. But amidst all of that, it is important you ask him, Lord, what do you want to achieve? What do you want me to see also? What do you also want me to see? What do you want me to see? Because there's something he wants you to see. Okay? So I'm trying to establish that so that we can all be settled. Right? How many of you want to see God in 2024? Show up for you. Wave. You want to see Him? No, now, wave well. 
You know some of you, after this service now, they will beg you to attend service again. You see the way you are seated, like a good student. You will not believe that a lot of people travel in this church. You will not believe. Look at how everybody is seated now. Carry their book. Let's call for midweek service. Um, are we good with the gen now? Have we learned the lesson? We did not learn before. Or with the thing. If we need to learn, let's carry our jota. All of us, go there. Sit down. Let them teach all of us together. Because I said it when they brought this thing and said, this whole thing that is touch, touch button. Let us not go and bring somebody that will touch the one that will touch. And the church will catch fire. It's better you sit down and learn it. Because the other one you can lift the switch. can press this one. This one. Amen. So I want to see God in 2024. I want to see him show up for my children in the exams. I want to see him show up for my husband. I want to see God in 2024. I want to show you. The title of my message is How to See God in 2024. Write it. How you can see God. In 2024. Write write this thing I want to say now. Pastobina is not your problem. Write it. Write it. Write it. (laughs) I am not your... Mm -hmm. If you are not married, I'm not your problem. If you have not given birth, I am not your problem. If you don't have a job, I am not your problem. If you want to travel abroad and it hasn't happened, I am not your problem. I don't give visa. So who is the problem? You. It's you, of course. So I'm going to show you. Are you ready to change? You're ready? Pastor Hope, this one you're looking at me. (laughs) I am nobody's problem. You came to church, right? I also came. You want to receive from God, right? I also came to receive. Brother, you, you want to receive from God? That's why I came to. That's why we all came. But there's a method. I don't want to be found in the web of calling God and calling God and calling God and God not answering. You know, he says, before they call, I will answer. I like that kind of book. That before I say, ha, ah, he shows up. That's what I want. In 2024, I don't want to find myself delaying. I don't want to find things delaying. I want God to come swiftly and answer me before I call. There's a secret that is found in the scriptures that will help you and I to see God in 2024. If you are ever going to see God manifest His power, if you are ever going to see the divine walk mightily in you in 2024, then there is something, there is a secret to that truth. And that's what I want to show you. Are you ready? Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter number 5. Please, I hope we are connected because We have a lot of people who are waiting for this service in South Africa. A lot of them. The number increased this morning. So we will not want.
Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 8. Read from your own Bible while they sort this out. Quickly. Let's read it. One, two, go. You've not found it. Matthew 5 verse 8. From your own Bible. Matthew 5 verse 8. Have you found it? Now let's read together. One, two, go. Blessed are the pure. Is it that you don't have Bible? Or you don't know how to read? Don't look at me. Look at your Bible. Read from there. Stop looking at me. You have seen me. If you don't have Bible, don't look at me. Be looking on the floor. Read one, two, go. Again, one, two, go. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Let's read for the last time. One, two, go. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The secret of seeing God is wrapped up there, and it was a message that Jesus himself preached. The first thing you must understand is this, that it is possible for a man to see God. This is what I want you to see. This is the first thing you must understand. That amidst what you are going through, amidst where you find yourself, amidst what life has given to you, the first possibility you need to understand is that it is possible for a mortal to see God. Jesus preached this message and he was talking to men and women who were not born again. They've never had the experience of salvation. The salvation experience or the born again experience was not yet listed here. So he was speaking to the Jews. He was speaking to men and women who were born under the old covenant. And he was telling them something. That it is very possible for a man to see God. I may not understand your own context your own contextual understanding of the phrase seeing God. But if, if we define it by what it means, if we leave it by what English means, it means to see God is to see God. Don't try to spiritualize it. Don't try to bring out a context out of it. Don't try to tell us what it, it sounds like or what it doesn't sound like. Let us leave it the way it is. Let us be like a child. Because it says, except you come like a little child, you will not see the kingdom. And little children, when you tell them, when you tell them this thing is black, and they come there and they look at it and it's not black, you will explain. They understand literal English. Literal English. They don't understand any other thing. It's literal English. Give it to them in the basic understanding. This is a TV set. When you press that button, it comes up. And you bring up the light and press the button, it comes up. They take you for what it is. Don't tell them, no, you press it, it doesn't come up. It means that something is wrong. You, you need to, you see that explanation? You will die there. You will die in that explanation. So, Jesus told us the first possibility. You may not know. Maybe you haven't been taught. Maybe you haven't heard this truth. That it is possible for a man to see God. Now he's telling us that that possibility lies with God. That you can actually see God. How many of you would love to see God? Can I see your hand? You would love to see him. Just wave. Be sincere. Your honest report is that you would love to see God. Have you stayed around people who tell you, and I had an encounter one day, and Jesus came to me. Or I heard a voice, and sometimes you feel like, I think God is partial. Why does it look like certain sects are selected to see God, while others do not see God? You just want to like, what have I done wrong? What is it that I'm failing to do? Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Tell someone it is possible to see God. Tell another person it is possible to see God. 
I hope everyone that is supposed to sit down and listen to these messages, please make sure the control room inside there is empty. Only the sound people. Every other person, pick your Bible and notepad. Come and sit down and hear the word. Because I can't... Where's Bro Gabriel? Both the pastors, everybody inside there should come out now. Sit down and follow the word. Praise God. I don't want to look for anybody. Should I look for you and I don't see you? You receive a course. And I mean it. Just sit down. So it is possible to see God. Very possible to see God. I want to see him is my ardent prayer. My humble prayer before God is that I want to see you in 2024. And now, I look at brother A. He has an experience. How he fasted 50 days. And finally, the day he was about to die, God showed up. I saw another sister who did not use the same format of fasting for 50 days. But she was in dying need and she cried out to God. And God heard and showed up. Another person told me how that he went or she went to the motherless baby home and helped the poor. And that night God showed up. I read and I was told how that Solomon offered sacrifice of 1,000 and God showed up. All of these things now, there are about four or five. Which one should I practice that will give me access or that will qualify me to see God? Because I truly want to see him. Should I practice the 50 days of fast or should I offer 1,000 bond offering? Or should I go to the motherless baby and help the poor? Or should I sit down and allow my mother die so I can cry out and God will show up? Which should I practice? Because all of these things are personal experience. They are not doctrinal. You didn't hear me. They are not principles laid out in the scriptures. They are just the experiences of men. And you can't use the experiences of men to know God. You can't teach your personal experience. It's not permitted. They are not permitted. So what do I do? Because I tried what sister A did, brother B did. I tried all of that and nothing gave me the result that I wanted. Then I am come, I fall short and I see that it's as if God wants to show me something else different from what he has shown them in the world. What is it that I need to know in order for me to see God? What do I need to know? But thank God for the scriptures. Thank God for the word of God. Thank God for the solace we have in the scriptures. Thank God for the truth that is written in the Bible. Thank God that the principles of God are here written and they are here and amen. They cannot be raised. The word of God is settled in heaven, the Bible says. And God cannot, God cannot lie. The Bible tells us God is not a man that he should lie. If it's written, it means he, he has vetted it. And says, whatever your situation is, whatever you are going through, if you can find me in this, you will find me. And I want to know what that secret is, so I can trace God. I want to know what that secret is, so I can find God. And Jesus came and began to preach the sermon that is called the Sermon on the Mount. And what he said was this, blessed are the pure in heart. So the man who fasted for 50 days saw God not because of his fasting, but because of the purity of heart. Solomon that offered 1,000 burnt offering saw God not because of his offering, but the because of the purity of heart. The lady that cried in their need of God saw God not because of anything, but because of the purity of heart. Are we live now? So the thing is the purity of heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. The man that is pure at heart will see God. Irrespective of what you are going through. All you need, the qualification. He didn't put and, 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 and. No, it's one. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The question now is, he has given us the answer. 
This is how to see God in 2024. Now, I want you now to begin to, let us now begin to do what I call Bible exegesis. Let's begin to remove and extract, remove, put this and add this. Are you with me? Everything, our definition of the word divine is that everything that has to do with God is divine. So, take out the word God in that context and put the word divine. You will see that the only way you will meet, have an encounter with this divine God is by carrying a purity of heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Lift up your two hands and say, Lord, help me in 2024. You will never have access to the divine until there is the purity of heart. The divine experience will be far from you until there is the purity of heart. It is the year of the divine, yes, but you may never have an encounter with the divine until there is the purity of heart. Until your heart is pure, you will never have an encounter with God. You see, it, is, it, looks, it sounds more tedious than what it looks like. It sounds more tedious. The accomplishment of it looks more tedious than the way it sounds. It sounds very simple. When you look at it in the Bible, it's one line. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. One line. But I tell you something, carrying it out is so difficult for some people. In order, and could this be the reason why a lot of us have not seen God? But I tell you something. I tell you the truth. If you ever meet with God, if you ever have an encounter with the divine, there is no way your life will remain like this. Because majority of the believers you see out there, why is our country the way we are? Why is our nation the way it is? Why is our school? Why is our school? Why is it like that? Why is the government the way it is? Majority of them go to church. They have pastors. They bow down to. They pay tithe. But why is our system the way it is? We are ranked one of the most corrupt nations in the world. But yet, we are the most religious people on the face of the earth. Why? Because many of us out there have never seen God. Because the qualification to see God is the purity of heart. You can have the purity of heart and steal our power money. You can have purity of heart and steal money for the road. You can have purity of heart and you siphon funds into your personal account. Because the purity of heart will restrain you from doing those evil because you continually want to see God. So we have a bunch of people who go to church every Sunday and attend midweek service. We have a bunch of believers who go to church. We sit down in the church. We walk in the church. But do you know one thing? Majority of us have never seen God. We've never had an encounter with this God. Because the qualification is so far from us. Even though it sounds so simple. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. I've been in church 20 years. I've been in church 30 years. I've been in church 25 years. Could this be the reason why some leave the church only to become a blogger to attack the church? Because you cannot attack the God that you have seen. You didn't hear me. You can't attack the God you see. So you are a blogger writing about the church, speaking and looking for the errors of the men of God. It simply shows you are carnal. You haven't seen God. Because you cannot see God and write against God. You can't see God and speak evil of his representative because you are one of them. For every time you write, I want you to know that your name is also included. Every man who has never seen God runs. I repeat that again. Every man who has never seen God will rant. They keep ranting. Look at Job. He was ranting. Where is God? Show up. He was ranting. Job. The Bible. Chronologically, Job, the book of Job is the first to be written. That book was older than the book of Genesis. It was the first book to be written. The book of Job is so old. That's why you read the book of Genesis and you never find the activities of spirits written there. Except the encounter that Jacob had in chapter 28 where he said, the Lord is in this place and I knew it not. But you never find activities of the Spirit. But until, that's why the book of Job is the first. You read the book of Job and you find activities of the of Spirit. That the one day the Bible says the sons of God were gathered and Satan came. How did he come? Who gave him the access? 
to come. How was he able to find his way to the presence of God? That guy Job was writing, writing, writing. He was questioning God. That guy hadn't seen God. He hadn't seen God. And finally, when God showed up in chapter 38, he says, who is he that darkened knowledge without knowledge? Who is he? Who is this guy that is speaking without understanding? Who is that guy? And Job said, Nami, he says, come, let's talk. Come. You have knowledge, right? You can write, you are a blogger. Come here. I'm going to ask you a few questions. If you can give me answers, then we will we, 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 we talk. And Job was confident to say talk. And he began to ask him. The guy was looking like a moron. Finally, he said, I have only heard of you with the hearing of the ear. Which means Job, Job's experience and belief system on God was based on rumor. There was no encounter. Many of our children that we are raising in church, we are raising them in church. They attend service with us. They are there. They are the future bloggers because they've never had an encounter. They've not seen God. And the only qualification to see this God is the purity of heart. I cannot tell you. I can't tell you the state of my heart when Jesus woke up to me. I can't tell if my heart was pure. But I tell you something. For the fact that he came. For the fact that he came. Means that there was something. The one who ranks heart. Has ranked my heart. And he saw something. And he felt if I. If, if this guy would see me. He would represent me. You're speaking ill because you don't know him. You haven't seen God. Ask your name. Have you seen God? <laughs> ask, 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 ask that one. Ask another person. Help me ask five persons. Have you seen the Lord? No, 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 no. You're not asking. You're asking as if it's casual. Ask somebody. Have you seen the Lord? Have you seen him? Oh, Jesus. I see the Lord. Have you seen the Lord? Have you seen him? Do you want to see him in 2024? Do you want to see him in 2024? There's no other thing. The qualification is what he has given to you. Blessed are the pure in heart. Ah. Do you know that? Now, uh, uh, let me shift a little bit from seeing the Lord. Let me come now to pure in heart. Do you know that the Greek word used for the pure in heart, it's also the word that means carrying a clean heart. Do you know that that was why Job prayed, Psalm, sorry, David prayed in the book of Psalms. He said, create in me a clean heart, O God. A clean heart. A clean heart. Can I tell you what it means? <laughs> oh! You know, right now you are searching your heart and say, maybe there's sin, there's sin. That, that's the first one, but leave that one first. Because all the people that Jesus Christ was speaking to in that Matthew chapter 5 were all sinners. The sin issue was a nature issue. It was the issue of nature. For all have sinned and come short. All, not some. All. Tell your neighbor you are included in the All. Tell another person you are in the all. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If it was that, if it was that issue, if that was what Jesus was trying to talk about, he wouldn't look at the sinners and tell them, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Because there were people who have seen God in the Old Testament, and the issue of sin was not dealt with them. Jesus didn't come to take away. He didn't take away their sin before they saw the Lord. Because there was no Jesus in the Old Testament taking away sins. It was in the New Testament. That John in chapter 1 says, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Do you know that when Adam sinned, God came and covered them? That means their sin was covered. In Psalm 32, the Bible says, Blessed is the man whom the Lord, whom the Lord does not impute. Are you with me? It does not impute sin. He covers 
But in the New Testament, God does not cover. He takes away. The first Adam's sin was covered. The second Adam came to take away. And we are not cleaved to the first Adam whose sin was covered. We are cleaved to the second Adam whose sin was taken away. Lift up your right and say, my sins have been taken away. My God. Listen, you can have your sins taken away, but you don't have the purest of heart. Oh, Jesus. Amen. We have started the year again. Rema will kill us this year. Rema, oh Lord, kill us with Rema. Remold us with Rema. Give us words that will reshape our lives. Because I have discovered, working with the Lord these few years, miracles do not change the heart of men. They see the blind open. They see the lame walking. They will still steal. A testimony that shook me was the one, you know, something happened in, in Christ Embassy that Pastor Chris was announcing he gave. I was shocked. A man came in there on a wheelchair, driven to the healing school. And the Lord looked down on him with the eyes of mercy and healed him. And the guy stood up and praised God and became a member of the church. And the man of God felt that since you went through the healing school, you know the experience of sickness. You know what it feels like to, see, to be sick. I feel that if you walk in the healing school helping sick people, it will also help your ministry. They never knew that the mistake they made was bringing that guy to the healing ministry. The moment that guy got to the healing school, he saw an open door. For him... The sick people was an open door. A means of enriching himself. You see, he's in church. He's in the house of God, but he doesn't know the God of the house. He began to siphon money from these people. He would tell them, the man of God cannot heal without my, my permission. Give me money, I'll put you in the line. And this thing was going on. Until one day the Lord said, look in what? And they saw this brother. Why did you do this? You see, that's exactly what happened to Ananias and Sapphira. Until certain things happen, the fear of God will not come back to the church. That's why I said you can know the Lord, but do not carry the purity of heart. And therefore you can be in church for 20, 30, 50 years and not see God. So the qualification is what Jesus said. Am I, am I, am I making sense this morning? Or are you bored? If you are bored, just tell me, sir. Sir, I want to go home. I'm bored. In fact, even if you are bored, you will hear me. Sit down here. You will hear it. Because the person that carries the trouble is me. After service. So I pray for me. My, my landlord won't kill me. So you need to hear this thing. Amen? Hallelujah. You need to hear so I want to see God. He says, blessed are the pure in heart. Now, let me give you the simple equation. It's very simple. The word pure in heart, as used there, watch this now. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see the Lord. The Lord, they shall see God. That means they shall have an encounter with the divine. The qualification for having an encounter with the divine is the purity of heart. What is the purity of heart? Is the transformation. No transformation no God encounter. Until you are transformed by heart, you are transformed in your heart, you will never have an encounter with the divine. A heart transformation will give you an encounter with the divine. Blessed are the pure in heart. That means God wants us to have the transformation of heart. Look at it. Blessed are the pure in heart. Which means he wants you to have the transformation of heart. If you are going to see God this year, your heart must be transformed. There is the transformation of the heart. 
that will grant you an encounter access into the encounters of seeing the divine glory to god lift your right hand and say thank you jesus is he, is he making sense 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 the key to changing your situations and experiencing a vital encounter with God is the transformation of heart. If you can have a transformation of heart, you will see God. Now, the heart is very broad. Very broad. Very broad. When we talk about the transformation of the heart, I will show you what you will see there. Number one, write this down. When Jesus talked about blessed are the pure in heart, I said he's talking about the transformation of your heart. When you have a transformed heart, this is where it's going to touch. Number one, there will be a mental transformation. There will be a what? A mental transformation. Listen. Our society will remain the way it is until we begin to touch the mental aspect of every human person. The mental transformation speaks of how, how educated is your mind. How exposed is your mind. How changed is your mind. What are the picture you process in your mind? How do you think? Because your thinking pattern can affect the encounters you will have with divine. The mental transformation. The mental transformation. Mental transformation. I'm showing you the things you find in the heart transformation. The mental transformation. Do you know why you beat your wife? Because you are poor mentally. The only way you see to vent your superiority over her is to beat her. That shows how shallow you are. Do you know why you steal? Because you think in your heart that God can give it to you. You didn't hear me. Do you know why you beg? Because you feel in your heart the person is better than you. So you resolve to beg him. You resolve to steal him. Because you feel God can give it to you. You beg because you feel that God had looked at you. And had weighed in the balance. And God feels that you are not qualified for big things. That you can't be a giver. All you need to do is in the class of receiving. Receiving is different from begging. I receive, but I don't beg. There are people, people who beg, who receive because they begged. And every beggar does not get what he qualifies for. You get what pity gives you. Mental transformation. Why do you dress like that? The Bible says there is a dressing. There is a dressing called the harlot attire. And it's a product of your mental reasoning. The transformation of your mind. That's why you pierce your nose. Pierce your ear. Pierce your, your teeth. Pierce your eye. Pierce your brain. They have pierced your heart too. That's why in the sense, in one sense, they have pierced your heart. You are a pierced dog. They pierced you. They pierced everything. You feel you are fashionable. You feel you are, you are in the in thing. But I tell you something. Trend. Trend. 
passes away. And those who follow trend, they pass away. But those who stick with the Lord, they reign forever. Can you shout amen? amen. Today, sagging is no longer as it used to be. Because the sagas are tired. Do you know why? The sagas have retired. Many of them now, the sagas are fathers. And now, in their being fathered, they are fathered bastards. Where are they? The sagas are walking like this. You thought you are in the in thing. But you never knew it's just the age. It will come to pass. Now it has passed. Where did it leave you? It left you only at the bus stop. Society have moved. You are still there. Now, the one that came is the madness of tattoo. I tell you, it's an age thing. It will soon pass. The time will come where there will be laws that scrutinizes your body. You won't be able to move so long as they find something. Then you will cry and look for remedy. And the remedy will be too expensive because you are following trend. Lift up your right hand and say, I don't follow trend. I, don't follow, trend. I follow Christ. You know the kind of messages you get? Oh, don't, don't clap. You don't hear these kind of messages in the church. Men of God who preach that the people stay away from them. No. They say, come the way you are. I'm not saying you shouldn't come. I never chased you out when you came. I'm telling you that you were stupid once a while. There was a time you were very stupid. And that brought about the degeneration of your mind. Look at the way you reason. Who sold that idea to you? Who told you you should put on a trousers and drag it down? Who told you that that's the in thing? That is an act of irresponsibility. And it is not fashionable. There's no fashion there. That is a shame. It's a disgrace. There's no act. All of you. All of you. All of you that like this truth. Tell me the truth. You have a daughter. Your first daughter. And the man who wants to come marry her. Came sagging. No. Don't shake your head. How will you say, wow, what an in-law. What an in-law. <laughs> those days, those days, when Jim Ike was acting, those days, there was a movie he went, he came back from America, sagged, and went to go and marry. Like that, he came sagging. And he just came and poured money. The people say, oh, my in-law, great in-law. They never knew. In that movie, it's not the real thing. Because, they, you know, people are there, they love us, they are looking for me. <laughs> It was in the movie. They, they, they never knew he, he, he escaped from asylum. They had mental. So when they brought the list of marriage and the in-laws said, this thing is not complete. He said, damn man, you talk to me, man. The other one tapped. The elder tapped. The other. You know, poor guy. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to deal with all of you. They thought it was a joke. The guy ran. They never knew he came with gun. And opened this bullet and brought out a gun. That's when the father-in-law knew that of a truth, for every saga, there's a madness. You got a federal appointment to meet with the president and you sag. It's not possible. If you can do like that, It's a lot of madness. That's mental transformation. A lot of madness. You're fixing dread as a guy. <laughs> you know why you're shaking your head? That's how the thing starts. It okay. Did you okay? okay. I'm telling you that you are not normal. Mental transformation. Mental transformation. That's the first thing. The very first thing. That the heart transformation, the man that will see the Lord mentally must be transformed. Your interpretation of encounters will be determined by how much exposure your mind has gone through. First thing, the heart transformation gives what? Mental transformation. Number two, 
just going to give you this run through it. I won't be able to explain so deeply. Number two, vision transformation. What do you see? What do you see? How do you see what you see? How do you define what you see? When the mind is not transformed, the vision will be blown. You can't give proper definition to what you see. God asked the prophet, what do you see? He kept asking, what do you see? And he would tell him, you see right. You see right. Jesus healed the man. He said, do you see? The guy said, I see men as trees. I see men as trees. The Bible says he laid hands again on him. Then he corrected his vision. Don't blame a man or a church you attend and you see plate around the altar. It shows you the mental exposition. The mental exposure and the vision exposure of the man on the altar. That there are ministries you will enter, churches you will enter. You will see where they bait with towel and they hang it very close to the altar. Define a man. Define a man when you enter his place by defining the things you see around him. How? There are leaders you catch on Saturday morning with boxers around the streets. Don't argue. Don't argue. Don't argue. You know why? It is the vision. The problem is the mind. Is the mental. They need a mental transformation. How can you wear boxers and you are free to stroll? You say, I just, I just want to go buy a car for that place. They know they buy them with trousers. It shows the level of transformation that you have gone through. You see a lady. She wants to buy something there. And she claims to be a leader or a worker in the house. And she just wears top. And there was nothing. She's, there's no bra. And she's just going. It's your level of transformation. We can see your level of... He said, they do me. What could it be gone? It is not a product of heat. It's your level of transformation. Am I talking to someone? It does not take you one minute to put it right. Because one day too you will go naked. It's your transformation. It's nothing. Don't, you know the problem with many people? They defend. I'm showing you why 2024 you won't see God. You're defending evil. God looks at it. He does not dwell in a place where there's iniquity. You've not brushed, you are going to Oshudi. And you say you are, a, you are a preacher of the gospel. You're not sat in the bus, you're saying, repent! And everybody bowed their head. <laughs> you say, why are they not receiving my gospel? I hate it when things are not done the right way. I hate it when I don't see excellent. I hate it when I see dead. I hate it when I see sand. I hate it when I see disorganization. I hate it when you are not organized. I hate it when there's no structure. I hate it when there's no line. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. That's how we learn. Meticulous walking. You walk like a saint. You don't walk haphazardly. Are you a dribbler? And you want to see the Lord. You can't. The mental transformation has given birth to your vision. And now your vision is blown. Until you begin to work on these things and change them. You will never see the Lord. And you see everywhere is quiet. Nobody is talking to me again. Because this won't hit all of us. It's your home I'm talking to you about. I'm not, I'm not in your house but I'm talking to you about your house. I'm talking to you about how you live. You represent Christ and you're representing well. We just live anyhow. You want to see the Lord? It's only worship we cry. 
No wonder God said he's, he's the Lord, he changes not. He said that's why you're not destroyed. Because if he changes and comes into the place of worship, he will keep billions. Number three, sight transformation. What do you see? There are people who have zeroed themselves that they can never amount to anything this year. It doesn't matter the message they hear. Their helper died in 2023. So they will tell you there's nothing. Sorry, yeah, you go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. What do you see? I see a glorious 2024 for me. What do you see? What do you see? What, this is just January. Today is just seven, seven days in the year. What do you see? Do you see a better 2024? Do you see a spring in 2024? Do you see a glorious January, February, March, April, May, June, July? Do you see a wonderful one? What do you see? If you go to read and listen to the news, I tell you, you will, you, you will retire to the village. Don't listen, don't read that thing. Leave them. Because I've already told you what the year is going to be like. Therefore, don't read. They are using you to play tete. Well, it's 1,260. I come in as a president and I bring it to 900. <laughs> This was the original plan. The 900 is for two, two months. I saw it. Two months, 22 days. It will not come back to 1,000. Oh God, there's nothing I've told you before. So don't read it. Follow what I'm telling you. You get men where they see tomorrow. Make I show you something. Leave these people. You will prosper even if they make it 2,000. The divine will come in. The divine will come in. The divine will come in. When God steps in, every other obstacle will keep shut. What do you see? How do you think? What are your visions? What do you see? Sight transformation. We need to change the way we see and the way we look. We need to change them. Some of us, you know, Yoruba have this saying, Poverty, when you are too, when you are swimming in poverty for too long, when they show you the light of prosperity, you reject it. You say it's a lie. It's not possible. So somebody will just prosper like that. <laughs> so it's difficult to accept. Because we are used to poverty. But I came as a man of God. And I came to tell you. The Bible says by a prophet he brought them out. Not by the president. You didn't hear me. Not by the president. By a prophet he brought them out. I bring you to a wealthy place. Just follow me. So we have the heart transformation that gives birth to the mental transformation, gives birth to the vision transformation, gives birth to the sight transformation, and finally it will give birth to what? Your confession transformation. What are you saying? How do you say them? Look at what you have been saying since. Things are very hard. Ilule. Your confession. We need to start working on them. Romans chapter 12 verse number 
Remember, no transformation, no transition. You will remain stagnant so long as you refuse to be transformed. Start thinking differently. Thank you, Jesus. And be not conformed I was watching a documentary of a guy who was drowning in a sea. Was there a sea a river? I think a river or something. And these guys came to help. And the guy was already struggling, struggling, drinking water. And when they came, they just told him, allow yourself, allow yourself, allow yourself, allow yourself. Release yourself, release yourself. At first, he was still struggling. They kept, just stood there, they were watching him. They said, release yourself, leave yourself, leave yourself. The guy in himself felt that if I, these people, these people are liars. They came to kill me. (laughs) How can you say I should leave myself? Release yourself, leave yourself, leave yourself, stop struggling. The more you are, you are going down, you are exa- just leave yourself. They didn't help him, they left him. Which means in 2024, so long as you are still exacting your strength, God will leave you. Until you let go and say, I can't, you do it. <laughs> One of the ways is don't trust in your salary. God can do open doors. He can bring open doors. Leave your salary alone. He never said by salary shall all men prosper. Don't be conformed. Let him. So the moment the guy, they allowed him to drink water, he was tired. The moment he has, he lost his strength. They now carried him. They brought him. After the guy got himself, say, you guys came late. You say, no, we're here. You saw us. Hey, but you guys didn't come say yes. Because we're struggling. And if we had helped you that time, you would have drowned all of us. Don't help. Try to help the man who is still struggling. No. Leave him. Don't conform. The world has a system. Don't conform. It says don't conform to this world. But be your world transformed. How? By the renewing mental transformation of your mind. It is only that that you only then you will be able to prove that which is good, which is acceptable and perfect will of God. Have you seen? Every judgment is based on the exposure of your transformation. The level of your transformation is the level of judgment you will give. I'm a pastor, so I can tell you. People bring cases. People bring issues. And the moment I begin to look at them, you allow them to talk. As, they begin, as you begin to bring the thing, you say, ah, but why didn't you see it like this? Do it like this. Ah, I never saw it like this before. Do you know why? It is the level of transformation. The mental transformation. I was able to deliver my mind to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and he helped me. Your judgment and your answers is a result of the level of transformation. Mental transformation you have given. Because that is where your answers will come from. It is what you think you answer. It is only children who don't think before they answer. Paul says, when I was a child, I taught like a child. But now you have put away childish things. You now think before you talk. But as a child, you talk only to think later. And your level of thinking is the amount of transformation that has gone there. So you will give a wrong answer, a wrong judgment, if what you think here is wrong. If you are polluted here, your answers will be polluted. You can't be polluted here and give right answers. Jesus said, whether you make the three right or what, A good tree will naturally produce a good fruit. You cannot walk on the fruit. No, sir. It is not the fruit that produces the tree. It is the tree that produces the fruit. That's why he told us in John 15, I am the vine. You are the branches. You are the fruit bearing part of Jesus. And the reason you should bear good fruit is because the tree is good. Jesus is good. Jesus is good. Jesus is good. Jesus is good. Sin will never allow a man give the right judgment. 
When you dwell in sin for too long, it's a blocker of eyes. It will blind you. It will blind your eyes. You won't see. Because she's your, she's your mother's friend, or because she's your ex-girlfriend, you will, you, will give, you will give verdict, judgment that will support her. So that you win her heart again. Heart that is won. Are you with me? It takes strong, matured, disciplined mind to give the right judgment, irrespective of who. This should be our life in 2024. Should be our life in 2024. This is how you see God. The purity of heart. How, how far are you from evil? The purity of heart. And you cannot be far from evil until your mind is touched by God. Then you begin to stay away from these things. The Lord will help us. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. That I want to have an encounter with the divine. But what he's looking at is, is here pure? So long as it's not pure. And here cannot be pure just like that. You look at all the things listed to make this place pure. When he talks about the purity of heart, remember, he's talking about mental transformation. Why? There are certain clothes I can't wear. Not because they are not good. My mind is too transformed to succumb to such clothes. No, no, no. no. I've passed that level. I can't succumb now to wearing it. My mind is too transformed. Have you ever traveled to your village before? From Lagos? If they give birth to you here, and you've never traveled, and you are probably 18 years, and you travel to your village for the first time, maybe X months your parents took you. The people in the village, there's a way they'll be looking at you. Then there's a way you'll be looking at them too. You know, they're looking at you like, wow, these people have not suffered. Chai, hey, yeah. And they will ask you, what do you want to eat? Mommy, I want to take tea. The voice is just laughing. Chai, I was there at Torengu tea. Hey, yeah. Torengu Minoko. I'm telling you, that's, they, they'll just be looking at you, Chai. Every little thing you do, mommy, mommy, get, mommy, where's my biscuit? Eh? They are looking at you like one who came from a very high place, child. And you are looking at them. They are not putting on slippers. They are running. You say, wow. You just tell your brother, Ken, why is he running without slippers? Do you know why you're thinking like that? Transformation. Do you know why they are seeing you like that too? Transformed mind. <laughs> it's the level of transformation that they have. So they are looking at their level of transformation that has met another transformation. And this one is superior. And they are looking. The same thing happens. Let's assume... That time you have been in that village for like three days and you are the champion ruling because you came back from Lagos until one, two guys came back from America. You know what? They knock you off completely. You become old school. I used to, I used to, I used to, I used to, they say, I get, get, get shift. That one from America, wow, Lord of all. The moment they are talking, they, hold, they are holding Eva water. Table water, they sip it, say, child. You that came from Lagos, you not say you want to drink this. Nah, I'm happy. They, they're just looking at us. In the morning, they wake up with their camera. They're like, Sahara, they're just moving. They see a guy climbing the palm. They say, wow, come, come. You know their name is not like Ken. No, no, no. Julian, Julian. He say, what? What are you calling? Julian, come. Who is calling me? It's Draxler. It's Draxler. Draxler is calling Julian. Draxler is calling Julian. What about Trent? Trent is there. I know, come. Yeah. Snappy Shaka Shaka ha. You You came back from Lagos With short bread They have relegated you Come and see people Who came back with camera The other one came out With camcorder And is videoing You're talking say, just, just stand like that Just be talking Wow it's a masquerade. Anna, Trent. Anna, Trent. There's a masquerade. Wow. They just go there. Woo! Look at the masquerade. They just come. Cha! They don't video masquerade. Oh, what, what, what's he saying? You don't. Why won't I? I want to show my friends in school that we got this thing in Nigeria, in our village. Leave the masquerade. Let it be dancing like a madman. 
You came back from Lagos. For, they have forgotten you. Now, in their mind, the one from America, in, their, in his mind, all of you from the Lagos, from the village, all of you came from the village. You are trying to say, no, I came from, from Lagos. Oh boy, level of transformation. Transformation, get level. American transformation, they higher than Lagos transformation. Now, we don't have an American transformation. He says, don't be conformed to an American transformation. Don't be conformed to Lagos transformation. Be conformed to kingdom transformation. Give me the amplified. There's a kingdom transformation. That means when we show up, we are of them that know God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external, superficial customs. Because they drew tattoo you drew. They pierce you pierce. They dance naked, you dance naked. It says, but be transformed. That means be changed by the entire, it didn't say some, entire renewal of your mind. By its new what? Ideas. And its new what? Attitude. So that you may be able to prove for yourself what is good. So when you find a believer who is unable to prove what is good, what is acceptable, and what is perfect, it's because of the level of transformation. No matter how much I pray and say this year will be good, if you don't have a balance, the year might turn out not to give you what you want. And you think it's God, it's because you never created a balance. There's something called the perfect balance from scripture. And we need to understand that. If you still go about breaking coconut with prayer this year, they will drink Gary on top of your head. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Surely I will have what the Lord says I will have. Surely, this year, you will have everything that the Lord says you will have. So I've shown you how. Now how do I build this? All of this transformation, how? 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 What is the material given that will help me achieve all of this transformation? The word of God. That means this year you must expose yourself to the ministry of the word like never before. You must. You must. You must. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you who have made up your mind not to attend midweek services this year, you have told yourself there are some services I will not attend. Solomon said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against you. Why? When you put the word in your, in his, in your heart, there's a heart transformation it does. You, it begins to checkmate the, the activities. To sin against him becomes difficult. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Be given to the world like never before this year. Like never before this year. And you are going to see drastic change. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus.